What's going on guys, welcome to another cash game review session. Today we've got our friend Sick playing 50 Russian cash on GG Poker. As usual guys, if you haven't already subscribed, please make sure you do so. These will come every Thursday or every other Thursday, depending on how often I can be bothered making the videos. And I'm back playing 200 Zoom now, so there should be highlights pretty much every Sunday. But I hope you enjoy the video guys, and I'll see you in the next one. So, let's jump into it. I'm excited. So pocket eight here, I think we mainly want to just be calling versus another gun and plus one uh, against like certain opponents, I guess. Let, let, I think we actually have like a squeezing range here. So it shows what we actually want to call once somebody's called as well and what we're actually squeezing with, which I think is pretty cool. So we're going to squeeze fold some hands. We're going to squeeze call some hands. We're not doing too much squeeze folding. We're not, we're not doing too much squeezing in general, to be fair. We're just calling quite a lot here. Even like ace 10 suited, it wants to call. Stuff like that. I do think the squeezing some of these hands is going to be okay. Nines, maybe a little bit, but eights and below, it's not doing. So we mainly just want to call. But I do like that they have a squeezing thing in there. That's pretty cool. So we do call and we go three way. And the turn is really bad, really. I'm just really not a fan of this turn. And honestly, I think you could go either way here. Yeah, I mean, I think we could just, I honestly think we can just fold because he's going to have a reasonable amount of equity. Having the eight of spades isn't great, although not really that relevant because seven, eight, eight, nine of spades could probably almost definitely bluff that flop. But I just think like, so just with the way, like the, the stakes that I've been playing, even playing like as low as 50 up to 200, I feel as though everyone's super nitty and I just don't feel as though people are just bluffing this enough. But I think either would be fine. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, kind of an awkward one. Uh, Ace ten, pretty easy to defend here versus the cutoff. Don't think we ever want to three back this hand. Check check. On the turn here, we have like probably a lot more nine x than he does. I this isn't a hand I ever want to bluff though. So let's see what you do here. I really don't like this. What what right? So why are we doing this sick? For what reason are we are we are we batting here? this size on this board just just give me give me give me give me your logic in in this hand with the ace 10 but uh, making fold ace high of fives to eights okay i don't really like it so you're specifically trying to target fives through to eights here and i just think that's a really bad idea so when we talk about bluffs that are good on the flop and the turn our best bluffs are going to be bluffs that have a lot of equity but don't have a lot of showdown for example one of our best bluffs here to go for a check raise will be something like five, six of hearts or six, seven of hearts or ace, five of hearts, where we have little showdown with six high or ace high, but we have a lot of equity. We have a flush draw, we have a gut shot or an open ender or whatever. So we have a lot of, you know, really strong bluffs. So when it goes check, check, my bluffs here, I'm always going to bluff a lot of flush draws. A hand like ace 10, I'm not going to bluff here because we have showdown. So by betting ace 10 here, we need to target hands that are better than ace 10, right? If we're bluffing. You know, we, we, we need to get ace-jack, ace-queen, ace-king, or pairs to fold. And I just don't think that it's going to work a lot. So I think that just checking is absolutely fine. When it comes to the river, again, we're at the same sort of idea where, yeah, we're going to have some 9x. But if you're bluffing your ace-highs here, you're going to be massively over-bluffing from a theoretical approach. The reason being, if we're bluffing ace-high, what's to stop us bluffing king-high, queen-high, jack-high, 10-high? eight high seven high we can have a lot of these hands right we could have like you know eight five of hearts eight six of hearts we could have just something like 10 jack off that we decided to go for the double barrel at least we've gone for a big size because you know the more hands that we need to target when we bluff the bigger we're gonna have to bet right so i don't mind over betting a nine here and over betting our bluffs i think that's absolutely fine i just think over betting ace high isn't a good idea we can easily have the best hand here we've got showdown value right so yeah he's probably not gonna have hands like king queen of hearts but it's a possibility but we chop against ace highs we beat king highs, you know, any flush draws or anything like that. But more importantly, it's the fact that it's so hard to get him to fold a hand that's better than ace high. So the bluff just doesn't really make sense. Like, it's just not a good idea to bluff ace highs on these boards. Like, it's just not. So I hope you get called. And you lose. Because it should teach you somewhat of a lesson. The thing is, so he folded, he could easily have folded the, you, you could easily have the best hand here. The thing is, he just shouldn't be folding like five, sixes, sevens. And not only that, pretty sure he be, should be batting those on the flop. So like, I don't know, man. I think that, I think this is, you've got to look at things from an overall perspective. If we're bluffing 
ace 10 here then i think we're just bluffing way too much because we have a lot of other hands that we so on the river it's kind of difficult to pick bluffs that are really good so on the river the bluffs we want to pick we want to unblock their folding range right so ideally not having any hearts in our hand is good right and we don't which is fair we also want to block their calling range so which is hard to do because the calling range is going to be like you know some pocket pairs and maybe ace highs yeah we we block ace highs but that's that's not a reason here so when I come into spots like this where I don't really know what bluffs I want to have, I'm just going to pick my worst hands to bluff. My worst hand here is going to be 5-6. I'm going to have 5-6 suited here, and I'm just going to bluff that because I'm like, look, I've got 6 high. Look at it this way as well, 6. So when we have 6 high, we get, theoretically, we get 7 high, 8 high, 10 high, jack high, queen high to fold, right? When we're bluffing ace high we need a lot of better hands to fold. So the, the lower down in our range we are, like the worst hand that we have, at least theoretically, the more hands we get to fold, so our bluff works more often. So it's therefore a better bluff. Anyway, 8 with 3 bet. So let's actually have a look what uh, raise your edges 3 bet in. It's going as low as 5s. I'm probably not 3 bet in 5s here. 6 is plus. And it is calling a 4 bet with most of these hands as well. In any case, 8s, we're definitely 3 bet in here. Uh, like I say, going from sixes plus, I think would be absolutely fine. And we take a flop. So this board, I know, like, I'm pretty sure we could choose probably bigger sizes when we do decide to bet. I don't think slamming a third with range on every single board is going to be fine. It is going to be the best thing to do. I do want to simplify, but I think on a board like this, we can choose a bigger size when we do decide to bet, which is going to be quite often. I'd be interested to see what Solver does. I actually don't know. But this board's really good for us. He should have fives and deuces, but we can have fives, um, we can have nines, and then we have a lot of hands that he doesn't. We've got like queens, kings, and aces, which he should just never have. I don't even think queens. I think queens is pretty much always far better. I, I would I would be betting half part here, to be fair. Uh, just drill it on the turn. I think there's a few things you can do here. The board's super wet. I don't hate a check jam. Let's see what size we go for. He's a big station, so I think we can just size up here. And also, what we definitely want to do, which you are doing here, to be fair, is getting the SPR to less than one. I think on a board so wet against the station, he's just going to call, so we can just bet a little bit bigger than this. But I think this is fine. It gives us a reasonable, just under a pot size bet, I guess, on the river. Because this turn actually brings in a lot for him as well. Like, you know, hands like 10 jack suited. Okay. Easy call. Love to see it. Gonna run it twice. I'm gonna hold both times. Things you love to see. So yeah, I think um, I think that you both played it okay. Actually, I would generally be four bet in queens just because I just I just want an excuse to four bet on the button. Let, let's see what Razor Edge actually does here. Button versus small blind. It'll either be a mix or it'll be pure four bet. I would imagine. Yeah, so it's just mixing here. I'm just finding any excuse to fall bet value. So, queens, I'm just always fall betting. But it is calling half the time. So, I think that calling is fine. So, yeah, I, I think you both played it um, okay. But at the same time, Sick, he's kept in your worst hands. It's just you've got lucky in the turn. Fair enough, you, you're not, you're probably not going to, you know, he, he's not going to win a stack on this board if it... He could win a stack on this board if it breaks. Let's say the eight it wasn't the eight of spades on the turn, it was the two of spades, and then the river comes the you know, the ten of diamonds. You could easily call down. Like with eights. Wouldn't be an unreasonable combo. The eight of clubs isn't ideal, but like So I think he played it fine. I think on the turn he wants to shove. I think a solver would possibly shove this versus uh this kind of size on, on a board this wet. I've seen some some spots where it does this with um with one pair type holdings. So I think he both played it fine to be honest. So nines with three betting here versus middle position. Do you know what? It wouldn't surprise me if this is actually a bit borderline and it's mixing this. Okay, it's it's always doing it with nines. It's half with eights. Just in some spots like versus under the gun here, my guess is it's going to be mixing then. Yeah, that is, it's, it's actually wanting to fold half the time with nines, um, which I don't think is unreasonable. I thought these were quite tight at first glance, but honestly, everyone's a fucking nit. It's disgusting. So nines with three bet and we're going for half pot here, which I think is fine. I think it's fine. Boards like this get really annoying here. On one hand, I want to bet. I want to protect. I want to get value. On the other hand, it's like, well, how many worse hands are going to call us, really? Other than very strong draws. Uh, and I think we have a mandatory check on this river. You have no idea what to do here. Like, <laughs> what's going through your mind here out of interest? 
Yeah, check, check. Can I pray any checks back? Uh, okay, just a fucking absolutely nasty. The, the problem is, that, like, I want to say that maybe this could be a call here. I don't know what Solve is going to do. We will have better hands here, but in terms of combo, it's pretty good because we're going to, we unblock, uh, like, flush draws and such. The thing is, he should be, he should be jamming King Queen and King Jack of Clubs here, I would imagine, for value. Um, I don't know. I think it's close. This is actually a really horrible spot where, like, we could still have, like, Queens, Jacks, and Tens, I guess. We could, I would maybe have aces here without the ace of clubs, specifically. I think you can go either way. I think that we can call off all day. What I, what I worry about here, that I think that we should call, in theory, but I just don't think you're finding enough bluffs here from your general population. Again, I'm, 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 I mean, I'm mainly talking on ACR where I've played. I've not played on, on here in a while. But from what I've seen, just people just always have it. Like, they just they just always have it. So the turn, I, I agree with you, Hazzy, for what it's worth, that, like, it's generally not a thing here betting this kind of size. But then, I, I mean, what does he really have that, like, continues that's going to bluff this river? If he has ace-x of clubs, he can have some showdown. Ace-five of clubs, ace-four of clubs. I think, honestly, you can go either way here with this hand. So we have better hands to call with. We can sometimes have some king X. So again, if I've decided to double barrel ace king of hearts here, for whatever reason, or king queen of hearts, which I might triple, just unblocking draws and stuff, I'm probably going to check some of those on the river, some of the combos where I don't have a club, just because we want to have some strong hands and we want him to, we want to allow him to bluff. So we've gone for the old fishy peel on the bottom with sixes. So, okay, I don't really hate this. When we've talked about here, simplification, I think as you're moving up and you're learning and stuff, and if you don't know the pools especially, that we mainly just want a three bet fold, it's just easier. And this won't feature as a three bet, especially versus a three X. Yeah, it's one of those where if we're just simplifying, for simplicity's sake, just don't call anything, just three bet fold. And yeah, we have to fold these hands, which have a little bit of EV, right? Even by calling. But I think that it's just... Again, like if, if if we've got fish, if we've got really passive players in the blinds, they're not going to squeeze a lot. We get to realize our equity. You know, if this guy's a, a, a these two are weak players, so I don't hate it. But for anyone watching, like if you're if you're coming through the stakes, if you're trying to learn, just having a three bet fold approach is just easier for simplicity's sake. Uh, we'll be continuing here with sixes with the club. We've got a gut shot, potentially the best hand, backdoor flush draw. Right, so we're doing the two point two x from the earlier positions, two point five from the later, as both the spot does, which I think is fine. Uh, ding, ding, ding. So we turn a straight, and then if he checks, we'll just bat big twice, I guess. He should only have four combos of 10 jack here. I'm just going for a raise versus this size. I don't hate calling, but I still think that there's enough merit in raising that you can have all the sets here. And, yeah. And there's a lot of bad rivers. Anything that pairs isn't great. A 10, a jack, a queen aren't all... Uh, the queen's not that bad. A 10 or a jack aren't great. Club's not great. And then just go big on this river. I'm going really big here. Because I think that he can still have... So, why why are we picking this size in? Want it to look bluffy. This doesn't look bluffy. Who thinks this looks bluffy? Less than half part. Bluffy. Behave. No, nobody's ever bluffed like this in their life. Bet three quarters part. That looks fucking bluffy. He snap folds to big bets anyway. Why does he snap fold to big bets? I think here we just generally want to be... Uh, I guess we have kind of the weaker end of our range. Because we can still have 10 jack. Although we should be raising 10 jack on the turn, but I think we should raise sixes. And I guess we do have some boats. In general, in these spots against weaker players, I think the best thing to do when you have a hand that is very strong, when they've taken a line like this, is just to bet big. So you've got to consider what he's going to call with, right? So let's say he has ace king of clubs. He's not going to call to this size. He's not going to call to a big size. Fish in general and weaker players are quite inelastic to sizing. So they're just going to be, they're going to play similar against sizes as long as it's not ridiculous so obviously one big blind and a jam they're going to play very different but 12 big blinds and 19 big blinds they're going to play quite similar so i think just going big here because he's just going to check call you with hands like aces because if, if he has a hand like aces or kings he definitely shouldn't have been betting the turn even for a small size if he has a hand like eight nine suited again he's just going to be calling those bigger sizes all of his nonsense all of his even like you know a seven of space uh, a seven of diamonds is probably going to fold to this size in anyway. I get your point, but like, 
I used to do this as well, Six. So I used to have the logic that, okay, instead of like, so let's say I had an SPR of just over one on the river, like 1.5, I would bet like a third on the river and my 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 logic would be that okay it's better to get called for a small size all the time than it is to jam and risk them folding but like especially against weaker players they're just going to be they're just going to call a similar range now i'm not talking about jamming for fucking 80 odd big blinds right i'm just talking about instead of going a bit less than half part go a bit more than half part go three quarters i think the difference between 12 and 19 against a fun player isn't going to make a difference and no hand yeah it's 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 not that difficult to find bluffs we could have maybe hands like king jack suited that decided not to three bet because if we're having a flatting range versus a 3x i think flatting king jack of clubs is absolutely fine so i'm just betting big here i bet you i bet you like i don't know tank calls with like a7 of diamonds and then like I look like a dickhead because he, he might have folded to the bigger side. But I just don't even think he would. I, I think that betting 19 here looks more bluffy than 12. And he folded anyway, so... Honestly, when, when you got good hands and you're against fish, just bet and bet big. And you'll win at poker. King Creamy open here. 9-7 deuce rainbow. <laughs> Getting in these kind of weird spots. I, I'm fine either way. I think it's a hand where... You know, we have the overpairs and stuff, but it's kind of connected. If it's like 9-4 deuce, I guess it's a bit better. On the turn here, I'm definitely batting versus a check. I'm probably just calling here and then using the king of spades. If We can basically represent flushes on the river as well. Um, we could also potentially represent a hand like queen jack. It's a bit of a big size, which is annoying, but we still have two overs and a gut shot, so I think calling's fine. And you better believe, you better bet your bottom dollar we're fucking bluffing this river. So I don't really like generally bluffing king highs. For example, this hand is the nut nothing. We do have a little bit of showdown. However, this card is just slam dunk fantastic. We have a reasonable amount of ace x, right? We can still have like ace kings here. We can still have, we can have hands like ace 10. We could have ace seven of diamonds. They wanted to check about the flop. And then we have a load of flushes and we have the nut flush blocker. So we can't have the nut flush. So yeah, I'm going for a very large size here. I'm possibly overbetting. Uh, I'm at least betting pot. Going this size, I think, is okay. I think this just puts any 10x in a very tough spot here. You know, if he's got maybe queen 10 with the queen of spades, I think calling that, but I think this is just a mandatory blow. Hey, now suited, we are going to open. Uh, nines here on the button versus a raise and a call. This is interesting. I'd like to see what Razy Reg is going to do here. I'm probably just always three betting here. Okay. So, I don't mind this size. I think... No, I do mind this size. I think this is too big. I talked before, mainly 3x in position, 4x out of position, right? So, that's the easy way of looking at it. So, in position, we want to raise three times their raise. We are in position. I know there's an extra caller here. So, what we could do, if he'd have just opened, we could go seven and a half big blinds. Once he's open and he's called, we can go seven and a half big blinds plus whoever's called. So, you know, let's say two people are called, I'd want to go 12 and a half. But here, I think we can just go 10 because we're in position. So being in position is really good because, especially in a spot where you squeeze in, because he's going to find it very difficult to call because he's going to be out of position to two players and he's given this price a really good price on a call. Not to mention he's not closing the action and could still technically, theoretically, get raised there. So we don't need to go as big in position because we're already putting them in a spot. But yeah, I would like to see a little bit of a smaller size, but I don't think it's absolutely terrible. Uh, this is kind of a weird one here. Right, we get four back with the nines. I'm honestly just folding. The size is relatively big. Again, this is one of them where, like, calling in theory is fine. Calling in practice is just not really that good. I, I think as well, because this is one of the worst hands we're squeezing, I'm just going to fold. So even though that we're supposed to three-back call a lot of these hands, I think in practice it's just going to be burning money. This was an awkward one on the left. He leads. I think calling is fine. The turn, we could maybe get a little bit frisky and raise and then bluff on some certain rivers. We block pocket eights and hands like ace eight suited and we block like nine seven suited. I also don't hate calling because we're getting it. In fact, we, we probably have to at least continue because we're getting such a dumbass price. It's about less than a third. So again, we, we talked about in the, in the in some of the other ones, not enough people consider how good of a price you're getting and how much equity you need with the price. So like four and a half big blinds into 18 is four. One, two, three. So we're getting four to one. So we need like what? Like, is it 20% equity we need if we're getting four to one? Which we just have with this hand. We can in theory have the best hand. An eight, nine or seven is likely to give us a good hand. The best hand. So it's kind of an annoying one, but I think versus this size, we, we, should, we should call. I, I don't know what we should do here in four bet parts. 
but it's probably not bad. Why, why are we betting? I guess we could bluff, but we need to bet smaller if we're doing this because the SPR is so small that we just don't need to do this. Just insta bluff versus face up. <laughs> what's he ch what's he jamming for? <laughs> if you're gonna bluff here, just do it with hands that have more. I mean, yeah, just do it with, like king queen of clubs and just fucking call it off. If we're gonna bluff, bet really really small. The stacks to pot ratio again. So what what I was just saying there about the price that we're getting, nobody seems to consider that. Something else you want to consider is the stacks to pot ratio. That's why I don't like the call when somebody's made it this size. And it's also for what it's worth why I don't like this this sizing. We should have gone smaller here. If we did three bet smaller, his four bet would be smaller, and the stack to pot ratio would be larger. We'd have more play here. We have an SPR of basically one. So the SPR stack to pot ratio is the ratio of the stack relative to your stack relative to the pot. Uh, but yeah, if we're going to bluff on, because the stack to pot ratio is so small, we could just pick really small bets here, like literally 10 big blinds. Because if I'm going to bet here, like the thing is this sizing probably doesn't get anything better to fold. Again, we've got to look at our bluffs, right? So we've got to look at what we're trying to target here. Like, is he just going to fold kings to one bet? Probably not. Uh, the ace king four bet is standard. I don't think we need to go 26. I think we could go... 24. I think 26 is a little bit big. Don't hate it. So here on the left, I assume we're against a fun player, so I'm just mainly calling here. I don't think 4-betting has much value for a couple of reasons, so I would imagine we could possibly 4-bet this. Yeah, so it does 4-bet some of the time. I think just call in here, especially against a fun player, for two reasons. First of all, they're probably not going to three bet as much, right? Meaning our equity is less. Second of all, the reason why we can four bet some of these hands is they should be doing a lot of calling in position. I'm pretty sure I should just call hands like aces in position, whereas I'm pretty sure your average fish is just going to click it back. So yeah, I think just call in here makes sense. Ace three suited, again, squeezing wouldn't be terrible. Bing. And I'm just mainly calling with the tens. There's some merit in raising, but again, not so much against a fun player. I like betting here. I'd maybe go for a smaller size. And this is a pretty disastrous river. Tens, I don't think we want to do anything. If you want to get very out of line, maybe we could check jam. The problem is I just don't think he's going to bet hands like kings and queens, even though I think he could. So I just don't think a check jam would ever really get through because he's just generally going to have stronger hands. Exactly. Um, I honestly think as well, if we bat the river against a fun player, that he's just going to call anyway on this board because he's going to be like, oh, two flush towards myth. Green nine opening blind on blind. But I suck blind on blind. I'm just going to I'm just going to throw it out there. I think we're going to do a reasonable amount of check in. I think on this board, this hand makes sense as a bat, and I wouldn't even hate a double barrel. I wouldn't even hate a triple barrel, river dependent, especially on a non diamond. I'm honestly probably just barreling the turn. So I don't like check calling because we end up just with. Queen high on the river, and he wins with like ace two sometimes, which fair enough, he was probably going to call the turn, but I think this would be a pretty good hand to triple barrel. So we could do some check raising on the turn. I think that would be fine. I just think when we have any equity in blind on blind pots, given how wide people are going to call versus this big size, uh, this small size, sorry, that I'm looking for any excuse to bet. So having a gut shot for me is an easy bet. So I'm going to bet three quarters on this turn or 80% on this turn, and then I'm going to fire on non diamond rivers. So, because he could have hands like ace five of diamonds, something like nine seven of diamonds. And on the river, he doesn't have many king x. We could have king x of diamonds. We have a lot of jack x. So, I'm probably just triple barreling this hand. I think this would be a reasonable bluff. The, the reason why I don't like check calling the turn is we end up in spots where he just checks back. Like, I guess we have the tiniest bit of showdown, especially on the king river. But, you know, we've just let him get there with his ace highs, with his ace deuces and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I would like to see a, a double barrel, I think. Don't like this call with Ace Jack. In fact, I'm never calling here with Ace Jack. Also, what I think from my experience, people just tend to not three bet enough from the big blind versus the cutoff in the earlier positions. They just tend to call even when they should be doing some three bet bluffing. Now, if he's a reg, he's going to be doing more three betting, but Ace Jack off is just a no go in my opinion. Let's have a look what it says here. Ace Jack's not in there. We could, because it's only four betting these. I actually spoke to one of the Razor Edge coaches. We could four bet something like Ace Jack here. If, if you think that they're three betting enough, which I just generally don't think that they are, then we could four bet a hand like ace jack off here, maybe even ace queen off as a bluff, but calling I just think is out of the question. I know it's calling ace queen off, but ace jack off's just like a lot worse. We, we can get, we get to call like very, very wide. If you look at what we're actually calling here, you know, I'm calling a lot of shit, but it's mainly suited cards. Like, because we just have so many more possibilities. Like even on this flop, which is a rainbow flop, we can still have turns where we pick up a flush draw, whereas... We don't on, on these rainbow boards. The offsuit hands like this, like king, king, queen, ace, jack, 
If anything, they're better as four bet bluffs when we're in position. Ace King going for the three bets, picking a slightly smaller size versus a smaller size raise. I'm okay with it. I'm okay just going 10 big blinds anyway. So interesting board. I think this is probably one where we want to do a lot of betting, I guess. I think just Ace King, we just generally want to bet. But again, I'm not going for this size on this board. I'm just picking bigger sizes because we want to utilize our overpower advantage here, which we just have, again, aces, kings, queens that he doesn't. Check the flop, going for a big size on the left, I think is fine. I wouldn't... I don't really like this combo for a bet, so when when I'm deciding whether to bet turns and stuff here, I'm, 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 I'm going to base it based on the actual combo of hand that I have. So like ace, king here, like ace, king of diamonds is a much better bet on this turn than like ace king of this combo. The reason being that we block ace queen and king queen of diamonds, which are hands that could take this exact line. Here we block ace queen of clubs, which could even consider folding the flop, considering that they don't have the backdoor flush draw, and we don't block any combos of king queen suited. We have the king of spades. So if I am betting this turn, I'm always going to fire on a spade river, um, and I wouldn't hate it, but I'm mainly just picking for double barrels, hands that are just going to be, you know, blocking some of their top pairs now. And then I'd triple on an absolute brick with that kind of hand because, you know, he could still have hands like ace jack of spades, 10 jack of spades, 10 jack of heart, stuff like that. So if the river came, you know, the five of clubs, for example, I would be triple barreling there. Yeah, because that would be a really good card for, for, for us because then it takes out some combos of, of uh, pocket fives as well. Really interesting on the left here where, again, this is in theory a call. So let's see what you do here. I don't hate this. I think we have to follow through on a spade. Here, I'm honestly like, oh my God, man. Okay. Let's talk about the one on the left. Check about the flop. We go for a large size on the turn and we get check raised. We call, which I think is correct theory-wise. We unblock all of his draws. We can have a lot of draws here. And we have a strong top pair. The problem is, good luck finding, like, enough bluffs here. I, do, I, I like the fact that you're turning this into a bluff. I don't like the combo for it. I think we just want to have the king of clubs. For two reasons. One, we're then not over bluffing. And two, we actually block some flushes. I think it's just much better. And we should probably pick a bigger size in. What do you expect him to fold here? On the left? I think we're just getting called by, like, 9, 10 a lot. I guess if he has something like... Jack eight, it's tough for him. I, I'd much prefer it if we had a club in our hand, but I don't hate it. I'd also prefer a slightly bigger bet as well because of what we actually, when we get to this river, we really can't bet a lot for value. We don't really have any nine X, ace nine of hearts, I guess. King nine of hearts. So we don't have that many nine X, but I think we can only bet nine X and better. So I think we can only really bet, like we can't really just blast here like Queens here. So the, when, we're, when we're only betting like a relatively thin range, we should just be betting big sizes. And just we we'd be polar. We like just we'd end up having to be polar that we'd have a really strong hand because of what we what we can bet here, or a really weak hand. So I don't I, I don't hate the idea that we're bluffing. I think we should just go bigger. I think over betting would be absolutely fine. I think potting would be fine. Again, this is quite a big bet. The problem is I just really don't think that we're gonna see enough folds here. I think he's just gonna have nine, ten and call you. I don't know. It's tough. Or pocket fours and call you. Yeah, I think eights and fours, definitely, he has that he probably just called. And the ace-king on the river here. Again, I'm not loving the specific combo just because... I, I, I think I'd now... If, I guess we unblock that like ace-jack of spades. But I, again, I think you're just kind of overdoing it in terms of bluffing. I'm really not sure if we want to just do this. Again, for me, it depends on the combo. I'd much rather do this with ace-king of hearts because I'd block ace... Even ace-nine of hearts, ace-queen of hearts, king-queen of hearts... And we'd unblock hands like King Jack, King Ten of Spades. I think with this exact combo, and I know it seems like such thin margins here that we're like, you know, we're talking about the Ace King of Diamonds is way better than Ace King offsuit, you know, club and a spade, but it is just thin margins in poker these days. If we're doing it with every single Ace King, we're just well over bluffing because what's the, if we're doing it with Ace King, what's to stop us doing it with Ace Jack? What's to stop us to doing it with you know six, seven suited stuff like that? So I think that I think we should just give up. But we're going for it. <laughs> Snap fold, there you go, Mark. Go on, fold there as well. I actually don't hate this bluff.
The, the, the good thing about this as well is I don't think that you see enough players. So if I'm in his shoes here, I'm not expecting my opponent to bluff King Queen, especially without a club, because just not enough people do it, I don't think. So yeah, I actually don't mind this bluff even without a club, but I'd much rather have a club. But again, I've just said I don't particularly like both bluffs, and they've just fucking snap got through. Uh, Jack 8 suit would be open a flop of flush, because life is easy. Yeah, I want to pick small sizes on this board, can go as low as a quarter. Uh, just blasting this turn with the Jack 8 suited now. Just batting as big as I can, really. I guess we could overbat. I guess we could probably overbat. And the river, I'm probably just overbetting. Because he can still have 10x with a heart here as well, which is going to put him in a tough spot. And if he wants to check jam fucking queen 10 with the queen of hearts, good luck to him. I think this is fine as well. I think blocking is fine. I'm either blocking or going extremely big. And I think it's good to, to have some strong hands in your blocking range. Okay, cool. We're getting 5 to 1 here. This is just the easiest call I've ever seen. It wouldn't surprise me if he's got ace 10 with the ace of hearts. I am an absolute fucking god. Okay, why are we checking this turn here? I think there should be one reason we want to check this turn. Okay, we're going for the check raise. Yeah, make sure you go for this check raise. Go bigger. Go bigger here, but yeah, big fan of it. I like it, check raise. The reason why I like it, there's a couple of reasons. We could three bet this prey, I think. Yeah, it's mixing between three bet call, three bet fold. So I think we should be three bet and prey. Especially a little bit deeper. I think it's just with more playability. The turn. I am actually a really big fan of the, the check raise on the turn. The reason being, so the spot earlier when we had the king queen, I don't think that people check raise bluff the turn enough. I think when somebody checks flop and then check raises turn, they are very much weighted towards value. Maybe that's just my experience. Maybe it's just a patch of rum bad. But I think this is a really good hand to check raise the turn with and blast every river block in, block in 10 jack. And we can take this line with 10 jack. We also block some queen x hands as well. King, queen, queen, jack. What also makes this a good bluff on the turn and potentially the river is that having a jack means that we block the nuts, that we block, um, you know, we block some strong hands. So I think this is a really good check raise to do. And then we can balance it with eights, nines, queen, nine suited, jack, ten. Easily. So I'm a fan of it. So this size, I think, on the right is actually perfect, or near enough perfect. So we're talking about wanting to go 4x, so that's somewhere around 8-bit blinds. Well, somewhere around 9-bit blinds, but then we also want to add his raise to it as well. So going somewhere around 12 here versus a raise and a call, I think is absolutely perfect. Whereas when we went 12 earlier in position with the pocket 9s, I think that was a bit big. And then we ended up calling a 4-bet, which I do think was a mistake as well. The reason why I think it was a mistake is because we made it so big, his 4-bet is therefore a lot bigger as well. The stack-to-pot ratio is smaller, and we just can't realize equity as much, and so we should just fold nines. So this hand on the right, for me, makes sense as a check, but this kind of board, you know, uh, theoretically, we can just bat a third with range. Quite disconnected, king, 5-4, rainbow. Yeah, we can bat thin, we can get called by a reasonable amount of worse hands. I think it's fine. What is this? What have you done this for? Tell me your exact reasoning for this bet. And if you think it's a good bet or not. I'm assuming from you saying, oh boy, that's probably not. Okay, why would we semi-bluff with fucking top pair, bro? So the logic here, this just doesn't make sense because when you bet for value, you need somebody to call with a worse hand. Okay, you realize it's nonsense, but you need to get it into your head to, like, you can't be doing shit like this. We could bet this. I wouldn't hate it. We, we block some of his strongest hands here. The problem is, betting like this, we're forcing out hands that we beat when we have top pair. And we're not really getting any better hands to fold. He's not going to fold like King Queen, King Jack. But yeah, so for th those that don't understand why it's nonsense, is over betting here. When you over bet, it's basically, by definition, it's polar. Again, what I mean by polar is that you're going to have an extremely strong hand or an extremely weak hand. Because you can't bet things big very thin because if we bet king seven here we need him to call with like king three king deuce or a hand worse than a king why would we bet that big i'm, I'm just calling every, every time against this small size against a fun player i'm just calling every time i think maybe if they do a hell of a lot of three betting and a hell of a lot of fold into four bets so let's have a look this is middle position versus a uh, small blind it wouldn't even surprise me if it wants to fold sometimes yeah 
It literally wants to fold half of the time here. But this isn't using any really four bet bluff, so I think we could actually mix between call and we could even just four bet this hand pure and just four bet fold this as a bluff. So it doesn't like to have many bluffs here because we want to call a lot because we get to realize equity in position. But I still think we should have some bluff, so I think we could use ace queen off if we wanted to. Thing is, this size is very small, it should be going bigger. And he's got 44% V pip and tagged as a weaker player, so I think we just want to play this in position. I think that's one of the best things we should do here. The thing is, like, people say this, but then they're like, and then I say, how many hands? And they go, ah, oh, 10,000. And I'm like, well, you're not getting crushed then. You just, it could easily just be variance. And honestly, against a fun player here on the left, I'm probably just giving, just giving it in here. Good luck to him if he's bluffing. Even versus a third, I'm probably folding without a bad off throw. Honestly, probably folding. Again, this is why suited ones are so much better than offsuit, and that's why we want to use the offsuit ones in position to four bet because it still has equity, but we're we're more we're more wanting the fold here, there, and we're more we're more choosing like hands based on our blockers. It doesn't have that much playability, whereas that like, ace queen suit just has so much more playability. Uh, betting the flop here, right? So if I bet this turn, I'm probably going to triple barrel, unblocking clubs and stuff. I I don't mind a double barrel here. Yep, I like it. Don't hate the triple. Problem is, a fun player just ain't folding a 10. They're probably not even folding a 9. This hand I don't mind as a bluff for a couple of reasons. We block some top pairs. We block king 10. We block jack 10. Hands he could credibly have. Um, we also unblock clubs. So he could have a hand like ace 7 of clubs. He could have like, you know, king 4 of clubs, king 5 of clubs, stuff like that, which just is an insta fold on the river. So I actually like this triple barrel. I can't really see much I dislike about it. It's kind of hard to get a perfect river bluff. Maybe we want to have, we don't want to have a jack because we want to unblock queen jack. But like, because we're betting flop and turn, we want to have some equity. I think this is a, a pretty perfect bluff, to be honest with you. So I don't do, I, I, I've ended up not bluffing as much now because I'm against opponents that I think fold way too much on the turn, meaning that their range is just narrower. So they folded hands that should be in the river. So, like, they, 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 when they get to the turn, the turn in the river, the, the, they're doing a lot of calling on the river because they've got to the turn with a tighter range than they should have. And when you're playing against opponents like that, I think tripling is just wasting money. Whereas when you're against good regs or sticky-ish players that are going to have some folds, I think it's fine. But you might just get called by, like, fucking 9-6. It's just it's so much missed. It just feels like they're going to call you a lot. But I like the bluff. I, 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 can't, I can't disagree with it. Can't disagree with that. Uh, on the left, queen turn, blind and blind, we call, check back flop, check back turn. I think I'm betting maybe small on the flop. I'm definitely betting the turn. So I see what you're doing. You know, we want to get to showdown and then we can bet the river small. We'll I think we'll leave money on the table. There's so much on the turn. Just think about how many, like, d different cards that can, that can change the action. You know, like king, ace... Club four, five, six. All of these will complete some sort of draw. When the draw, when the board's like this, we've got a strong second pair blind on blind. I honestly think that checking here is a mistake, unless you know that the opponent's gonna do some check raise shit, put you in some spots. I think we just want to bet the turn for value and, and and nothing other than value. Don't I'm not worried about protecting. I just want to get money in the pot because we have a strong hand. As played on the river, I'm probably going a bit polar because again, like you know. He's probably calling with like something like ace four for a small size or a big size. So we may as well just get more money. Ace green should be three bet in here. I think we're mainly three bet flatting, I would imagine. Size I think is fine. Ugh. Honestly, I'm just folding versus that size. So let's have a look. I guess it's not that big. Like it's fine. Three bet flatting ace queen. And against regs, I think we should be doing. I think it's way too strong to fold. Against your general unknown at these stakes. I'm very happy mucking it versus a big four bet. I'm honestly okay mucking it. Notice that we're flat and aces in this spot because we're doing a lot of calling in position that we want some extremely strong hands as well. Otherwise, we're going to be unbalanced. Yeah, I think you can go either way here. I think we should be calling. Again, this board, I'm not doing this third sizing. When I'm betting, I'm going to bet bigger and I'm just not featuring this as a bet. I think you just oversee betting. Yeah, calling I think is fine here. Really awkward one, I guess. I, I, I'm not going to start doing this on these king eye boards. We have the no nothing again. Now what? And again, now you don't know what to do. I, I don't hate this and tripling it, blocking ace queen. Nah, I'd prefer it to be the other way around. Where we have the thingy. 
it's just so random, like, I don't know, I don't, uh, I guess it's not the worst thing ever, because we don't have, I mean, what, what other bluffs are we going to have? I don't know, it's not, it's not the worst thing ever, but like, I'm probably just checking a lot. I, I'm also worried when people check these King Eye boards, like, it's such a good board. Why don't you want to check back for, again, people just don't want to, why don't you want to check back? You should want to check back. You're basically saying, I don't want to check back the flop and see a free turn card. Why would you not? You are not folding out queens to tens by doing this. You also block pocket queens. Not every player is going to four bet tens, blind on blind, believe it or not. You might target jacks with this and then a small bet and then a jam on the river. You might get called down anyway. You could have aces, you could have kings, you could have ace king, you could have king jack suited, king jack off if he's, flat, if he's doing all these hands. And a hand like king jack off would make a lot of sense to take this line with. And then you just have to just call down. I, d I don't really know what to say about it, but yeah. Uh, on the left-hand side, again, because I'm not doing a lot of betting on this board or I'm not betting my entire range, when I do bet, I'm betting bigger. So we bet bigger, especially with queen 10, because we unblock all of the two pairs and pairs. So we can have a lot of pairs. And then we're just betting the turn. I don't think I want to overbet. Not really a kind of turn I want to overbet, but definitely betting is, is okay. Definitely betting big. And that's going to be it, by the looks of things. Indeed it is. So, Mr. Sick. Cool little transition. Um, I think you played okay. I think you're definitely going to be winning. So what I'll say in general, don't see that as much. Try and learn the differences. Even if you just look at some basic solver stuff. You can look at the differences between what kind of boards we want to bet a third with range on and what kind of board we want to bet bigger on and stuff. Uh, I think in general, you just see betting too much. And I think when you're against regs, it's going to become a big problem, especially if they have like stats. I know they won't hear or they might now with the new stuff. But if they have stats and it says what your C-bet is, you can exploit that so easily. There are people that will have like on ACR, like 92% C-bet and I'll just definitely widen my value as well as bluffing range. And just check raise a shitload, like because they've got ridiculous e bets. So I'd calm down on what you see betting, and use some bigger sizes on boards that are favourable for you as well. Another thing with sizings is in the spot where you bet. I can't remember the hand. You bet twelve point four big blinds with pocket sixes. I understand your logic, but I think especially against fun players, you just want to be betting bigger in those in those situations. Just because I think they're going to be, like I say, in elastic to sizing, and they're just going to think in terms of whatever their hand is, and they're not going to want to fold over pairs. So I think you're just leaving money on the table. Same as like the hand with the queen 10, you know, blind on blind, spots like that. Just try and consider, you know, we, we, we want to bet these hands for value. I don't think you're betting thin enough or some of the time is big enough for value. In terms of bluffing, theoretically, I think you're massively over bluffing. In practice, I think it's actually probably okay. I don't want to say too much on it. It's going to be based on the pools and the players you play against. You'll know that better than me. You're probably going to be fine getting away with it. The ones that I didn't really like didn't really like the ace king triple, but it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but I'd prefer to have a different combo. Try and like consider what combination of hand you have, what you actually block and what you would unblock when you're when you're choosing to, to bet on rivers. I like to triple barrel. The king jack one I liked. I really didn't like the first bluff we saw where you bluffed ace high in a double paired board. I think that's just going to be burning money in the long run. But yeah, other than that, preflop seemed pretty standard. A couple of things I didn't like, the ace jack off call, but that was about it. But yeah, I mean, your aggression, I'm not, I can't even say to, to calm down with your aggression because it could just be absolutely printing. I don't actually know.